what we learned from the godfather of homebrewing, Charlie Papazian. Step one is relax, have a homebrew. My name's Tim Adams. I'm the owner of Oxbow Brewing Company, and that's where we are today. We're up here in Newcastle, Maine, at our farmhouse brewery. But I still love busting out the homebrew kit. Got the Yeti gear that I've converted into a pretty snazzy setup. We're gonna make some beer today and have some fun. For myself, I basically break down the brewing process into 10 pretty straightforward steps. First thing you wanna do is to heat the hot water up. So we've got our kettle here. We've got a burner going, and then you need a nice kettle. You can see we're already heating up the water here. While your hot water is heating, you then crush the barley using your mill. The beer that we're doing today is gonna to feature some awesome barley grown right here in Maine. And then we're gonna to have to crush it up. Barley comes in whole kernels. So we've got our grain mill here. We've got a bucket underneath to collect the grains. We've got a little trick if people don't feel like grinding all that by hand, we'll use light power tools. How about that? It's time to mash in where you're adding that hot water and those grains together in the mash tun. Adding some grains, adding some more water, adding some grains till I get to that consistency that I'm looking for. You don't want it to be too thick, but you don't want it to be too thin. I'm not seeing any clumping, any dry spots. Ready to let this mash rest. Here we are clocking in right around 150, which is great. All right, so our mash is resting right now. It's gonna be sitting in here for about an hour, and then we're gonna start that recirculation process, or as the Germans call it, Vorloff. So the mash has been resting for about an hour and it is time for some recirculation to get it clarified. We're gonna pull the wort from underneath the grains and then put it right back on top and just recirculate it for about 10 minutes. That's looking pretty good to me. I'm not seeing any chunks. That's really the most important thing. It's never gonna be crystal clear at this point. Oh yeah, here we go, boiling wort, here we come. All right, so what we're gonna do is just via gravity, send this wort over to the kettle. So I'm gonna do a gentle crack over here. Oh yeah, that's what we want, see that? All right, now that we are collecting our wort, it's time for our first hop addition. Uh, one of the little tricks that I like to do is called the first wort hopping, which is when instead of waiting until your kettle is full and the boil has already begun, uh, instead you add hops right in the beginning so when they hit the wort, they just explode and you get the maximum kind of flavor out of these guys. So this is a nice strong boil. This is great, this is what we want. And we're gonna let this go here for another hour. All right, so we're making multiple different hop additions throughout this boil. Those flavoring hops have been in there for 10 minutes. It's been 75 minutes since this wort came to a boil. And now it's time for the Whirlpool. We're using our Oxbow Estate Honey. All right, the honey is in. So for the whirlpool, we're just gonna stir this around. We're gonna use the centrifugal force of the whirlpool to pull those chunks into a tight little kind of cone or mound in the center of the kettle. We're gonna let this rest now that it's spinning and in about five minutes or so, we're gonna be able to knock it out and leave the solids behind and just extract the liquid. All right, time to knock out. So the wort is coming out of the kettle into the pump, into the heat exchanger, and then right here into the carboy. The kettle's getting empty and the carboy's getting full. The yeast. We got some right at the bottom of this tank. That is magic, that is life right there. Still wort, but in a pretty short time, this wort is gonna turn into beer thanks to the wonders of the yeast fermenting out all those sugars and turning them into alcohol and CO2 and it's, it's an amazing process. Here we are a month later in our brewing and fermenting process. That beer spent the first two weeks in the glass carboy, and then it spent another two weeks in the secondary fermentation vessel or conditioning vessel, and I used the Yeti loadout bucket. And I did a little hack too, where we took the vacuum brake and I actually popped this thing right out and I put it in upside down. And what that did is it allowed the CO2 to escape. And when I put it in there, I added some more of our honey. We need to add a sugar source in order to restart a fermentation to get that natural carbonation that we're looking for inside the bottle. It's time to get the beer from the bottling tank into the bottles. So I got my beer going in. Just pull the trigger, use gravity 
and that is filling right up. All right, cap goes on. Nice and snug, sealed up well, ready for re-fermentation, natural carbonation, and the best beer we could possibly make. Cheers, everybody. Mm -hmm.